Hey everybody, got another video here for you. Okay, you've seen the thin wood neck design. You've seen the the neck bar connector idea. Time for the third new idea. If you take a look at this guitar, right here, this is the recently completed X7 version 3, I think it is, or something like that. The latest version of, of like the X6 type design tail tuner. And uh, it's got, you know, the normal bells and whistles of the neck and the triangle heel and the guard and the bridge pickup. New type of bridge um, being favored for tail tuners now because it has individually adjustable saddles and it's been used on a couple builds. If you look, it's actually got the same kind of bridge on the new Robo Tuner build as well. So, yeah. Uh, this one is before the Robo Tuner here is the first one that's got the sliding pickup feature. So, that's something new. Now, I was looking at this thing and trying to think of ways that I can improve it. And I can't really think of anything to improve it except for one thing and that is the fact that it's kind of long. If you take a look at this tail stock area here, it's kind of long. And uh, like the, um, the X6, which is actually the original prototype built in plywood, this is the X7, it was, uh, it was basically an X6 done in, in red oak. But the the body on the X6 is even a little bit longer. It's got you know more stuff back here for the strap lock and stuff sticking out. So so I was thinking, well, about the only thing you could do to improve this would be to figure out a way to make the whole the tail stock shorter, the whole thing shorter. And the only thing you can really shorten is the tail stock. So yeah, a different tuner layout that would result in an overall shorter tail stock was my was my goal and my target or what I was working on and I thought about well you just take them and you go them all this way and then boom you know you've cut off as much from the tail stock distance as possible or length as possible and I was like yeah that's okay but that ends up you got a set of tuners that instead of being only, you know, 55 millimeters wide or whatever, pardon the kitten, you got a, you got a set of tuners that are now sticking out like this. So I was like, oh, okay, but you've got the problem of your legs going to be right here. And if you got strings coming around a tree and then coming out here, that, might interfere with your legs so yeah so just flaring it out and making them straight across and thereby shortening the body by about this much wasn't really an option and it's like well you could offset them and stuff like this and but in the end what i came up with was if you look at the Robo Tuner, because of the fact that it's originally an experimental build, I was like, you know, not exactly sure how much space I needed and what kind of brake angle I needed on this, but I knew that if I was flat going into the Robo Tuner, that I should be okay once I had good string spacing. And so, uh, and so I left extra room here or these hold down bars. And if you actually look at these two guitars, the distance from the back of the bridge to the first tuner on this one is a whole lot closer than it is on this one. I mean, this, this one, the tuners are almost twice as far away. And so, um, because of that, 
when you've got the bar on this one, which is currently in the park position, if when you've got it swung over to the leg position and you've got your leg cut out action going on like here, which would be like here, your tuners are back here. They're back far enough that they're not going to interfere. But if you look up here, if you had a if you had a three by three on this thing, then your bridge is right here, and and that's that tuner right there is going to be talking to your knee, or talking to your leg, so to speak. So, so a straight three by three is not really going to work like you got here, unless you like move it back, and that kind of defeats the whole purpose of trying to get the whole thing a little bit shorter. So, yeah. Look, you want to see what's just below the camera? This is what's just below the camera. A little baby kitten. Okay, so, yeah, he's he's somewhat distracting. This is Moo Cow. He's the latest addition to the family. One of the latest additions to the family. I call him Moo Cow because he has the, the black and white splotch similar to like a cows or brown and white kind of a, a coloration pattern. So most of the cats that I have are, are moo cow type cats in a black and white. Occasionally I'll get a gray and white, but mm, I've got one. But uh, he's not here at the moment. Back to the guitars. Okay, so, so I thought about it a while, and I was like, well, what you need, what you can do is you just need to, like, leave enough space for the leg to go in, the way this thing does. Yeah, here we go. We can measure it out. Okay, put the, put my ring finger at the bridge, and the space you need for your leg is going to start just after this finger more or less so I put my ring finger at the bridge and yeah as you can see here there's plenty of clearance for where your leg because this this is the area where these three fingers are this is more or less where your where the guitar rests on your leg when the bar is out and you're in the seated position and there's there's clearance there and see these are servo motor type thingies and they don't turn easily, so you don't have to worry about bumping them and throwing it out of tune. On this thing over here, you know, once again, you're pretty close. But these are just regular tuners. And, uh, and you could bump them and throw it out of tune. So thinking about it for a while, I decided that the best solution that I could come up with, which was better than nothing was to go with something like this. And basically it's a four by two tail stock. And all you do is you just take this thing and make it rectangular instead of triangular. And it only comes out to like the fourth tuner. And then these two tuners get moved over to this side. And these guys are, it's just, it's just a straight tail stock or triangle more or less out to here with no taper or, or diagonal cut at the back end. And so it'd just have a flat bottom and it'd have four tuners on this side and two here, which would be, you know, these guys would more or less just kind of like shift out to here. And then these two guys, you done knocking stuff over over there? Kittens are playing. And these two guys go opposite of these guys on the other side. Which means that you've got a tuner here, and you've got plenty of room between your tuner and your bridge for your leg. And that's the, that's the basic idea. The latest, the latest improvement to the, to the hardtail design. Because I basically got two designs. I got the hardtail design, then we got the trim design, which is... Of course, a Steinberger, which is probably a good way to transition to the next topic, 
which is the carbon fiber body. Where did I put that sketch? Here it is right here. Okay, so this is what I sketched out for the carbon fiber body. This is if you were going to take the carbon fiber neck and you were going to make a carbon fiber body to go with it and you were going to make it fit a Steinberger bridge and you were going to make it like an X13 with the EQ and stuff. So this is basically it. what you would have to do if you're going to glue a bunch of tubes together to create an X13 body. You can see in here, there's the, there's the Steinberger right in there. And uh, so that was the basic concept. And then I went through and was, before I shot this video, I was taking all the little tubes and just and matching them up against the bracket in order to figure out what size all these tubes would need to be. And it turns out that the four inner tubes would all need to be 10 millimeter, and then you could go with like a 17 for these two on the outside. But just like, you know, the general, that would end up with like, you know, six tubes you got to cut to size and drill and then glue together all coplanar and stuff like that. And it was like, in the end, what's it going to get you? And it gets you bragging rights. And it increases the cost of the body. Rather significantly. Well, uh, on a percentage basis, it's significant. So, you know, I mean, it's like you could... These bodies really, technically, they can be executed in plywood or, you know, from from pine from a 2 by 4 kind of thing. So you're talking a very, very low cost for the wood that you need versus the wood that's nice versus the wood that's just bling. So... And let's see, in woods, an example of that might be need, well, you need at least plywood, three-quarter inch thick, or, you know, pine cut from a two-by-four, or something like that. Um, what would be nice, maybe if you want to, like, you know, go for a mahogany in order to try to kill the high frequencies, or go for a maple in order to try to preserve them, that might be nice. Um, what would be bling? Bling might be choosing babinga versus, versus maple for the body because they both tend to preserve the high frequencies being stiff woods. And, uh, the only other, and otherwise, you know, it's just a matter of babinga is more bling bling. But as far as like the as far as like the effect on the guitar goes, other than cosmetic or aesthetic, is it's not really probably that it might not even be detectable. I mean, I've built guitars with babinga bodies, and I've heard or played or you know might even own something that's got a maple cap on it, and. Uh, and yeah, it's, you know, bright's bright. When you're talking like the difference between one bright and another, when, when you're talking guitars and woods and stuff, it's like so trivial, you know. A spectrum analyzer might not even pick it up, at least not an off-the-shelf commercial end-user consumer type. Um... All right, let me stop rambling because I've got a battery light flashing at me. What else is there to cover? The carbon fiber body, right, yeah. So that's like the basic design for the carbon fiber body. Um, I see no real advantage to it other than bling. So, and like I said, it's gonna, it's expensive and it's non-trivial to put together. And so I don't really see a point at this point in time. And because at one point I was considering doing the carbon fiber triple tube neck and doing the carbon fiber body as well. But after thinking about it and figuring out what was involved and the hassle benefit ratio just doesn't seem 
worth it at this point in time. Um, at some point, if I want to do, you know, uh, just a bling build, just to go, oh, look, I can look at what I can do, even though I don't really have to. Remember the old-fashioned rule. Just because something can be done doesn't mean one should. You know, this is, a, this is cool and everything, but this gets it done. You know, that gets it done. That's pine. This is red oak. That's pine. Oh, you can't really see them from here, but somewhere back there. Yeah, there's plywood versions of these kind of things. And they they all get it done, as long as the plywood's thick enough. So, yeah. It's all about getting her done. Well, it's not all about getting her done. You can get her done, then you can get her done with style. Building it out of something like this, that's getting her done with style. And yeah, someday I might, you know, do something like that. Just because it's cool. And yeah, it looks cool as shit. And yeah, I'll have to do one one day. But I don't think that day is going to be today. And that brings us to the neck. And long short on the neck is, if you look, the one all the way on the right with the twin V bars and the light tan strap and the black neck with the silver at the top, all the way on the right, just the left of the Heineken boxes. That's the twin tube carbon fiber neck build, which already is a successful proof of concept of using carbon fiber tubes to create a neck. So, at this point in time, until such time as I want to make a guitar that has a carbon fiber neck, and the carbon fiber neck is at most nice and definitely not needed. So, until such time as I want to do one, just basically for the coolness factor, because I personally have no problem with playing with the truss rod from time to time. You know, I mean, it's so rare that stuff really needs to be messed with, because I'm not gigging out, that, that, you know, it's, I, for the hassle-benefit ratio of, of twice the, twice the parts cost for the neck, I can't really justify it. So, the carbon fiber tube neck, which is, um, there, that's the carbon fiber tube neck, right there. Yeah, so that's the carbon fiber tube neck. And the basic idea is you just kind of like, you know, glue the center one on and then glue each of the side ones on. It's already been fretted and, and, you know, polished and all the rest of that good stuff within an inch of its leg. This was originally the, the aluminum V-angle bar build fretboard, so. And it's all nice and flat and everything, so. Yeah, basically all I'm doing is I'm gluing these guys on this guy. And all it does is it gives me a more ergonomic profile for the neck. If I can get it back here far enough so you can actually get an idea. Uh, that's the basic idea. And it gives you a real nice profile on the neck. Super, super comfy. And this only... This basically reproduces a neck that's more or less the same dimensions as one of these guys here. One of these uh, trapezoids. Because the center tube is 15 millimeters thick, and the fretboard is 5 millimeters thick, and the, two sh the rods on either side give you a thickness here at like halfway in to the center of more or less the same thing you've got going on with the trapezoid. 
So it gives you a real nice neck profile, super comfy, you know, rock solid, no truss rod re required. The only problem with that one is that it was made with twin 17 millimeter tubes and thus is a little bit on the beefy side. It has uh, an overall thickness of 22 millimeters versus 20 and when you go halfway into the center on the side it's sorry about that uh, it's probably two maybe even three mil thicker at that point in the in the neck profile so so yeah, the, the concept's already been proven and all this is is a more ergonomic version. And so I don't really see a need to dedicate an entire build just to prove it, just to prove that an already proven technology can be made more ergonomic. So I think the carbon fiber, the triple tube carbon fiber neck is going to wait until I have something worthy of putting it on. I mean, if I'm going to do this, I might as well, you know, combine this with something else. Like, uh, well, I'd do it with a RoboTuner, but the RoboTuner's already got a neck. So, it'd be, you know, I might, I might be able to use this. I could use this in order to do, uh, in order to do the Scarab. I could put this on the Scarab. Or I could put this on guitar number five with the trans trim. Basically, guitar five is a guitar 13, but instead of having a, uh, wherever it went here, instead of having an, an R trim, Steinberger, the R type trim, it's got a, the original, I've got a one original trans trim with the, like, you can lock it in, in pitch up, pitch down stuff. But anyway, um, other than that, it has the same functionality as this thing. It's a little bit more complex design, but it looks weird. It's got all kinds of like wheels and stuff on it, but it's the same basic idea. Um, the pitch shifting, you know, it's not to die for exactly. I'd, I'd say that all things being equal, this one's definitely, you know, it gets you everything you want, except for the pitch shifting. And you're talking, you know, probably double the price if you want to, oh, if you want to get the trans trim, try it. Trans trim type that does the pitch shifting. So, yeah, that's a mouthful. Say that three times. And, okay, so, yeah, and then the only thing left is what's next, and give me a minute to check the list. So, what's next? Well, the tuners came in for the uh, Fender 12, and they've been installed, and I'm in the process of raising the uh, depth pick guard on it. I actually had to give it a little bit more next shim in order to get things to line up the saddles all the way down and uh, everything's looking good alignment wise now I'm gonna this is the the top portion of the of the old depth pick guard and it's gonna go in here and it's gonna be angled so that it's just below just below the strings, the same distance from the strings all the way along from top to bottom. And those are little stands that it's going to go on, one in the front, one in the back. They're the correct height for the neck side, and we'll get a few extra shims going up, up here by the bridge. And I'm in the process of, since I had to pull, that had a big chunk of wood underneath it, and so this has all been sanded back and restained, and it's now got its second coat of uh, shellac using the wipe on with paper method. And uh, it might get one more coat, possibly. Uh, these have one coat on them so far, and they'll get a couple more coats. 
But once all that's done, then I'll go ahead and put this guard on and, uh, and finish stringing it up. So that's one of the things that's, that's next. And uh, the Flying V is coming along. It has, let's see what's going on at the moment. At the moment, the back is drying the first coat of uh, wipe on poly. The front has one coat on it already dry. And the neck is right here. And it has one coat on the back so far. Kind of hard to see because it's so close to light. It's a 350 watt LED light, so. Um, well, 350 watt equivalent. It's only about, it's less than 50 watts actually. So those are, uh, that's kind of what's on the bench. And then what's next is I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the scarab, which is uh, basically it's uh, one of these stick type guitars with um, whatever a stick type guitar is. Yeah, like this thing. But it's, uh, it's a no head with a uh, Steinberger and the body is shaped like this. That's a quarter scale drawing. And I'm going to give it the carbon fiber tube neck, triple, triple tube neck. And I'm also going to try out the, the thin wood um, heel. This one as opposed to the triangle kind of heel thing. So, um, so I think that's going to be next. And I'm also going to use the trans trim on it. Just to, that way I get the trans trim build the scarab build and the triple tube neck build and the the thin heel build all in one build so that's probably going to be next and that's probably going to be that might even be this afternoon because uh everything else is in the paint shop drying so but i think that's going to do it for now um because of the size of the body the scarab's actually going to be made out of, the body's going to be made out of plywood. So, and then I'll use either plywood or pine or something for the bar. There's no reason to, you know, use oak or pabinga or maple if it's got a plywood body. So, or unless I want to get fancy and use a piece of carbon fiber for the bar. I could always do that. That might be cool. I might do that. But anyway, until the next one which is going to be, yeah, this thing probably. Well, the other two, when they get out of the paint shop and reassemble, and then, and then it'll be this thing. So until the next one, everybody have a good one.